Now this is not exactly a new concept, but this is something new to me. I am not a presenter. At least not in the traditional manner. But this is a wireless ring mouse. And I thought it was kind of interesting. There's not much to see on the box, so let's just jump into it. There you go. And there you have it. That is the mouse and it's a little 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Down underneath, we do have a product manual. Should give you all the information you're gonna need, probably in several languages. Yeah, just showing you how to get it all set up and what it will do and how to everything. Driver installation information, activating the driver, switching languages, dimensions, characteristics, all of those things you're gonna need to know. And that was unexpected. You also have a little retractable micro USB cable. That's about 18 inches long, maybe two feet long. That's pretty cool though. And in the very bottom of the box, a little CD. I honestly have not used a CD in years. So very interesting to see that in here. And actually this says 25 minutes, 225 megabytes. It doesn't have any branding. It doesn't have anything on here. It looks like just a writable CD. Maybe they wrote something to it. I don't even know if I have anything that has a drive in it that will read this. I'm gonna have to look around. I will not concern myself with it for the moment. I have a feeling it's probably just a product driver. Now my concern here, my real concern, is it says over on Amazon, which you can find this on Amazon, I'll have a link down below. Compatible with Windows XP, 7, 8, 10, OS 10, Windows support, Mac OS, does not support iOS. Please notice Mac cannot support the driver. Presumably that means the Windows driver that's included, but hopefully it means you don't actually need a driver to use it. I'm gonna give it a shot and we're gonna see what, if anything, it does. So here's the 2.4 gigahertz dongle, as well as the ring mouse. And presumably you just stick this on your finger, a way that you find comfortable, and you'd be able to interact with things using the buttons on here. So you have up, down, left, right, a center clicker button, like a presenter button, and what looks to be a status LED. On the side, there's an on-off toggle switch. We'll go ahead and toggle it on. You see this little status LED lit up, it's now blue. And over on this side of it, there's actually a micro USB charging plug. Oh, but that's interesting. I just connected it to the Mac and immediately I'm able to use it as a mouse just by moving my finger around on it. I kind of, I don't know why, but I kind of figured it was going to be like a motion, a gesture sensitive one, but it actually just involves running your finger along the center here. It's not terribly sensitive, but it is working, so that's cool. If I click the left button, the mouse stops working. Well, and that does sort of appear to be working. I mean, just out of the box, just plugged it in, and basically I've just been kind of running my finger along it like this, as long as I avoid pressing this button. As soon as I press that button, it stops actually working as a mouse. And of course, taking a look back at the manual, which I probably should have done ahead of time, it says here the center key is your left mouse button, the right button is your right mouse button. The number three, the top button, is select and move files to move files anywhere after selecting it. The number four, the left button, is a function composite key. Switch among cursor, scroll wheel, and DPI. So presumably, let me go back over to something that has scrolling. Click the left button. Ah, it does work as a scroll wheel then. That's actually very convenient. Scroll wheel, if you want to use the scroll wheel, just click the key, move your finger. Click it again to shift the cursor function. DPI, default is 500. Press it for five seconds to shift between 500, 1000, 1500, and 2000. And it's gonna flicker the light based upon what DPI it is. So we'll go ahead and hold that button down. We'll see if it'll change. Flicker it twice. That means it's 1500 DPI now. Boy, that's a lot faster. I mean, that's a lot faster. That's three times, which makes it 2000. Oh, that's way too fast for me. Sorry, you're not able to actually see this at the moment. I'll try to get some footage of it afterward. And now we should be back at 500 or 1,000. I'm guessing they have it in a weird order. One is 1,000, two is 1,500, three is 2,000, four is 500, I think. But either way, 1,000 appears to be about where I would want it to be, just for the sake of accuracy and control. And the right mouse button is working appropriately. The top and bottom buttons don't actually appear to be doing all that much. But again, I don't have anything installed to customize these. I could probably customize it with another piece of software on the Mac. But just sort of initial impressions of this thing, it's not uncomfortable on my hand. Using this little thumb pad to, to move around things is a little odd at first, but I think I can actually get used to it. Really, the whole reason why I even got in touch with the company when they reached out to me is that a lot of times I end up having to control my desktop, which I have hooked up to my TV, from across the room. And I have like a wireless keyboard for it, and it has a wireless mouse built in but having something where I can just sort of sit back and browse using just my thumb would be kind of convenient, so I went for it. So one way or the other, I think it's definitely getting the job done. It's accomplishing what I set out to do. It gives me the option to control my PC remotely using one teeny tiny little device. And you know what? It doesn't mention anywhere in the Amazon listing how long it actually lasts on a charge. 
at this size with this small of a battery, I can only assume it's probably gonna last a few days, not months and months or anything, but it's not having to power anything other than just a couple of sensors and buttons, so maybe it will last quite a while. It does say it takes two hours to charge, so keep that in mind. Maybe just every few days, plug it in. I'm gonna give this a thorough test and just see how it works out for me. If there are any glaring problems or anything, I'll make sure to list it down in the description or maybe do like annotations or something. But so far, initial impressions, it's not terrible. It's interesting. It's about $37 over on Amazon, so I'll leave it up to you as to whether or not you think it's worth that. If you're the type of person that does a lot of presentations, a lot of PowerPoints, lots of anything that's gonna require you to be away from your computer and you wanna be able to control it, this could be a great option for you. But thanks so much to this company for sending it out for me to take a look at. Thanks to you guys for watching. Leave a thumbs up down below the video if you like this video and subscribe to receive more of my videos when they become available. And I will see you again next time.